And we are live. Welcome, Highfalutin Ski Bum Podcast, episode number 230. It is your pals, Mario and Brian. Mario, what's up? It's it's a pretty good night. It feels like Christmas. Um, little There's a lot of shit going on with skiing. We'll talk about that later. But there's a lot of stuff going on with the Christmas spirit and spirits in general. Today was the first day I made Jaeger tea. Look at that. For it's those who are good. not... For those who are not in the know, maybe we'll get into a little bit more in the under the rope or the uh, apres today. We will get into it. There's that's a the, lot of apres going on. Let's put it that way. That's it's, the appropriate, right here. it's the appropriate spot for it. Well, yeah. I will tell you, I'm being, I'm pre grinching right now because <sighs> last week we had a wonderful podcast. We were, it was before Thanksgiving. We were excited. My dumb ass, well, my ass was dragged to a Thanksgiving festival. <laughs> <laughs> or Thanksgiving with in-laws who we found out Sunday or Monday tested positive for fucking COVID. Yay. So, seriously. This is why I say do not hang out with any non skiers from November through May. Just you cut them out quarantine. of your life. Cut them out of your life completely. I feel fine. I feel wonderful. You know Why? Because I eat goddamn liver chips. And what are the ingredients on those beef liver chips? I want to know. Liver, it's liver and salt. That's it. That's it, huh? That is it, baby. But it's beef liver. So it's Grass cow liver. Fed beef liver and sea salt. That is it. Look at these numbers. <laughs> Look at these numbers. Know. Boom. Mad cholesterol. Cholesterol is actually good for you these days. Yeah. Look at that vitamin B, vitamin A, B12, copper, so much copper. So I went for a cholesterol test not too long ago, and they talk about good cholesterol, bad cholesterol, right? And I thought it ended there. No, oh, no, it doesn't. They go by the size of the cholesterol, the quality. Of cholesterol. Like there's a whole bunch. There's middle cholesterol. Yeah, like there's, it's like, there's like, you know, gender neutral cholesterol. It doesn't know if it's good or bad yet. Somebody was telling me like their doctor told them to to take something. They said, stay away from cake and shit like that because it has sweet cholesterol. I'm like, what the fuck is sweet cholesterol? They're just making shit up now. Yeah. I'm like, it's fucking stay away from the sugar. How about that? They're like, oh, no. Well, the sweet cholesterol raises my sugar. Yeah. It's called fucking pre-diabetes, bitch. <laughs> the umami cholesterol. Is there any impact the, from that? What the fuck? It's called sugar and carbs. Like it's that. That's yeah. not, you know, I yeah. don't know. So my dildo brother-in-law to be <laughs> sister-in-law they had it welcome to the family dildo brother. Uh, just like i they don't ski uh, they don't snowboard they're useless God, they're totally it. useless so yeah i went so we took the family for a goddamn eight in the morning holly jolly festive covid test drive through so it's just, uh, it's just so this is you your your beautiful wife your beautiful little boy, who's how how old? Three year old son, and, and your two tiny little baby. baby. Yeah, that's yeah. the last fucking thing you need. Yeah, last goddamn last. thing I need in this fucking yeah. year. This is the last goddamn thing I needed. But no, it just proves all my You're theories. Broken. You do not hang out with people who don't ski from November into May. I'll hang out but with we'll you see. in the summer. That's about we'll it. We'll see how the we'll see how those beef liver chips hold up though. If the beef theory on the chips, beef liver chips. Oh, I assure you, I actually have two months supply, so I can eat these things every goddamn day, twice a day through my quarantine that I got to go through now. And I will be friggin' strong like bull better than ever. Bring it on. I'm not even afraid. I'm pissed off. I'm not even afraid. What would you do if they come out and they say beef liver chips fucking fight COVID and everybody corners the market like toilet paper on beef liver chips and you can't get a goddamn beef chip for miles i will be selling these things for 5x what i paid for them is what i'm gonna be doing you will freak the fuck out wouldn't you you'd be like you sons of bitches i was eating these beef liver chips after 2020 i'm not gonna freak out about anything because you know what you hear something you have no idea if it's true or not they could say hey it's snowing right now in friggin' jackson hole and you can go there and it's just dry as a bone like you just yeah. Nothing can be taken at face value anymore. Like that's how ridiculous what? the whole world has become. This? You go to Jackson Hall, fucking oh, we got two feet of powder, but we're also that elliptic. <laughs> oh man. This is like 
Wah, wah, wah. Yeah, because you know somebody's gonna have that. There's gonna be somebody, unfortunately, that is gonna have that fucking experience, and it's because of 2020. Thanks, 2020, 2020. man. Well, thanks, COVID. Thanks, thanks China. COVID. <laughs> the China virus. The China virus. That's what every I think time too. He, that, every time Trump does that. I almost think he says vagina virus. I'm like, whoa, whoa, what is he talking that's about? What's so goddamn funny about it? But that's also true. Like, look, fat Donald Trump beat COVID in like four days. Yeah. I he mean, was fabulous. He was the most fabulous <laughs> sickness I ever had. What the hell they friggin' shoved into him to like, you know, to, Dude, to get him rich. through it. He's rich. He has like the rich thing. Like he get AIDS and be clear. <laughs> look, look at fucking Magic he Johnson. Did. Yeah. He's like, does it have to be coming to me in suppository form? It's like, well, sorry, Mr. President, it has to be. That's right. At least warm and it Bill, up, perhaps. Bill, Bill Clinton goes the fuck out and comes back with not a drop, not a drop wrong, right? I'm sorry. So regardless, I'm pissed Ooh, off. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna slow them <laughs> right off the rails. 10 p.m. coffee today. That's the kind of day it's been. Damn. Wow. I ain't even, I ain't scared. I ain't afraid. I just got to deal with this goddamn quarantine, get a negative test result, cut out all non-skiers and snowboards out of my life, and then get back on the goddamn powder in two weeks. Then 100% ready. That's the plan. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for listening. We do appreciate it. Check us out, skibumpodcast.com. You're on the socials, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, at Ski Bum Podcast. We don't understand reels. We got to get some reels going on. Like We need someone to explain it to us. Got some real stuff going on, <laughs> dude. We got like, for keep, reals keep changing Instagram and like, yo, man, it's for I reals. Don't have goddamn time to learn about this, so I need someone like again. We need more interns. Like we need we need an Instagram intern. That would be really handy. Dude, so if we just, just gotta wait it out. We waited out the TikTok phase. I don't know. I think this TikTok on the way down, well, Facebook's on the way down. Well, like, what happened was so like Snapchat was a big thing for a while, and then Instagram pulled stuff from Snapchat. And then they added stories and then Twitter added stories. Like they just, they, now the reels is like the TikTok on Instagram. So they just kind of keep pulling from all the other things and putting it in there. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I just, if anyone wants to help us out, get our reels game stepped up, we definitely could use that. Ski bum podcast at gmail.com. Hit us up, help us out. We need it. Obviously oh, yeah. you can tell well, our topic today has something to do with this but if you're looking for some sweet swag we had some sales this week some people took advantage of it some didn't we'll have more throughout their holiday season ski bum podcast.com slash shop got some dope swag here like this awesome shirt this awesome hat get some stuff for your man or for your lady everybody needs a lady wearing that swag that kind of makes it like nice they're like hey what are you listening to i want to hear it and then you could share that with your spouse this is or your girlfriend or your buddies whoever exactly spread your binary person that's there in your life what do you what do you do if you're dating a binary person or a pet for your pet you could buy it too but how do you refer to a binary person if you're dating them? like if you marry a binary like do you say it's your life partner life partner like life partner or what is the correct terminology i don't know and why do you have to tell me what pronouns i can use i'll say whatever the fuck i want how about that my pronouns are ski and pow that's right. Yes. All I have. What do we forget? Oh, yeah. Go to your favorite podcasting apps. Rate, subscribe us. That would be wonderful. And thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. Mario, let's kick it off the way we always do with Opry Today. Well, today's been a big Opry Day for me. I, I can't lie. Um, I won't lie. Uh, You've gone so quarantine at home bar hopping. Well, so... My beautiful bride, my wife, my life partner, my wife, binary, my wife. Uh, <laughs> she <laughs> got me a while ago, like a month ago. She goes to Costco and comes back with, "Hey, Mary, look what I got you! I got you a freaking advent calendar of beer." I was like, "Of German beer." I was like, "You're the best wife ever." So, um, I can't drink every day because I got a lot of stuff going on. <laughs> And I want to work out and I got work the next day. So I don't drink every day. So contrary to popular belief or popular actions that I've had in the past, I don't drink every day anymore, at least. So you're I evolving. You're growing up. Yeah. So I decided to save up 
the advent calendar days and drink them all in one day. So look at that. Why have one beer a day when you could have seven in one day? Right. This is so, true. Luckily, we started the, in moderation. Exactly. So luckily, we started the week um, like midweek started the month. So I'm only up to day four, which is I have four beers on, on deck. So I went through three beers today. Um, I'm going to post them on, but they're pretty good. I got to say the ones that I've had, um, I had a Flotzinger, uh Hell. So that was day one. That was a, a Hellas. So if anybody hasn't had a Hellas, they're very good, easy drinking. Then I had a uh, first Carl Keller beer. Which Keller beer? What does a Keller beer mean? Doesn't Keller mean basement? It's like a basement aged. Could be basement aged. I have no idea. But it fits uh, Bavarian purity law from 1516. So that worked out pretty good. That was a good a Keller beer is a type of German beer, a lager, which is typically neither clarified nor pasteurized. See, ah. the term means translates to cellar beer, referring to its cool lagering temperatures. You its recipe probably dates to the Middle Ages. Damn that. So I drank a middle aged beer. It was great. Middle aged beer. Yeah, there you I'm go. Middle aged guy, middle aged beer. And now I'm on my third one, which is a menopause a, beer. <laughs> menopause beer. It's a <laughs> cause cause. So it's a German Pilsner style. So the Hellas is light. The cellar beer that I had was pretty light. Um, and this one's a Pilsner. So this is pretty light too. So I'm doing pretty well with that. But today we got a Christmas tree. So we went tree shopping and we're in Florida. They still send fucking trees from North Carolina, like everywhere else. Um, Do they charge like a lot more for a tree down there than they would somewhere local? Like 35 bucks. Same, same thing. 35 bucks. Pick guy smoking, like pick anything you want on the light. <laughs> you know, that's like the same tree guy everywhere. Exactly. They clone them and they send them out all across the country <laughs> and they chuck it on your car. And if you're not careful, they'll fuck it up. But we just got a new car like two weeks ago, traded in the two for the one, the whole thing. And uh, I was like real careful, like putting it on the car. And then once it was strapped on the car, I'm like driving around trying to make the fucking tree fall off. <laughs> it was pretty fun. Like, did it fall off? Nah, that thing I had, I brought my own tie down. So I was ready to go in like, in like two minutes. They're like, oh, you don't want this? No, nah, I don't want you fucking twine. I got tie downs and I got a big ass bungee thing. I had everything ready. They're like, oh, this is cool. And of course I tipped them like, thanks a lot, man. I didn't have to do anything. I tipped. I'm like, fucking Merry Christmas. Seriously. Mario Christmas. Anyway, it's funny. Trying to lose a tree, but it's a big ass tree. It's like an eight footer. So I got to say they picked out a whopper um <laughs> and they we did the whole thing trimmed the tree real quick i got the saws all out fucking boom and uh did that and then i decide you know what the tree's getting trimmed tree's getting put up we got a tree christmas is happening i got fucking christmas decorations everywhere it's beautiful it's a winter wonderland so what do you do i gotta make jaeger tea so while I'm drinking these beers, I made Jaeger tea, which is pretty damn good. I got to say it was, it was a good batch. So, so for those who are not, not familiar with what Jaeger tea is, I'm yeah, sure somebody so out there is thinking, is that just like a, like a jug of warm Jaegermeister? Well, the, the answer yeah, that. Jaegermeister and tea? Absolutely not. So it's like another version of Glühwein or Punch or whatever you call it. There's a lot of names for it. But it's made and that's with like a, a hot sang like, like, that's like a hot sangria kind of the uh yeah it's like a mulled wine right mulled wine. There in you america go. for the gringos we call it mulled wine yeah <laughs> the um, non-initiated yeah but jaeger tea actually has tea in it there's orange so it's basically um wine usually red wine but i like using white wine uh and then today i just chucked in a little red wine um there's tea in it, so there's regular black tea. There's orange juice, but I cut down the orange juice and I use a little um, uh, tangerine tea is what I use today. Usually I try to get an orange tea. Um, there is spiced rum um, and then liqueur, which is usually plum brandy, 
but I didn't have plum brandy. So I used a little bit of cur- of Kirsch mm. uh, schnapps and that wasn't enough. So like you have to put like a cup of each, like it's kind of it's boozy. Big- Oh, it's boozy. It's and I water it down by adding more wine into it. So <laughs> it's more wine than let, you know. So it's it's a weird mix, but it tastes great. So because I didn't have plum wine, I had a little triple sec, a little um, Kirsch liqueur. What else? I was getting rid of all the bottles that had like a little bit left. Mm-hmm. And I was just like fucking chucking them in. I'm like, yeah, I haven't drank that in a while. Like the time to get rid of bottles. So blaming Mario. So I fucking threw everything in there. Um, and it, it was good stuff. It wasn't like crap, but so I threw that in there. Good through little clove, little, uh, cinnamon in there. Everything's good. Little, um, lemon that's mulling over. And then I'm tasting, I'm like, it's missing something. So then I decide, let me see if Disarono will help. Fucking throw a little Disarono in there, smooth that shit out. Tastes great. So really, that's what I got. Yeah, actually helps. Add another flavor, and then I add a little shot, one shot out of this whole big batch of coconut rum. So Hmm. a little flavor, little. So you added coconut rum and spiced rum, amaretto, and amaretto. Wow. And it tastes dynamite. So dynamite. the thing with with I'm sure glue wine or you know punch and Jaeger tea is it's all the taste. So you got a recipe. Like, well, it's a guideline. You know, it kind of gives you a place to start, and you got to make it your own. Yeah. Yeah. So I have this induction cooking uh, thing that I like a burner that I take out. It's like a portable one. So I put that on. I put the like a hot um, plate kind of thing. Yeah, but it's induction cooking. Have you done induction? Because it's like, so you have to have a metal. So I have a stainless steel uh, nice pot that I put on top of it. And what happens is the induction cooking, I think it uses um, uh, magnetic charges or whatever. And it basically, what it does is the burner doesn't get hot. It charges the metal pan. So the pan itself is actually what's getting hot. Hmm. so it's very efficient um you see it in a lot of high-end stuff now like they'll actually have like cook cooktop stoves that are induction cooking and they're great because like after you take the the item off the only heat that's left over was from the pot that was heated the actual burner doesn't doesn't give off any heat so you're not trying to transfer heat from the burner to the pot it's just heating up the pot itself so it's really weird but it's very cool and the good thing about this little burner I have is you can set the exact temperature every 10 degrees. So 140 degrees is where alcohol will burn off. So I set it to like 110 degrees, 120 degrees for a, a while, like 10, 20 minutes. And then for about another 20, 30 minutes, I had about 130 degrees, which it's not going to boil off the alcohol, but you're going to get all that mulling and all these spices and, and shit getting together. So. Just saying, worked out really if, well. I wonder if you used an Instapot because you remember we had that story a couple of years ago Instapot about how the guy does the same. He turned yeah. the guy turned like grape juice into wine using yeah. like yogurt mode. What do you think you could do to Jaeger tea with yogurt mode? Same thing. So yogurt mode is what you want to use if you're infusing <laughs> THC into oil, which is yogurt what I did a few weeks ago. But you got to use yogurt mode. Yogurt mode is like the party mode. So party mode. So it, it's that 110 to 130 degrees, like 135, like 35 is riding right up to line. You go 140 degrees, you're boiling off alcohol, which you don't want to do. No. So I looked it up like today. I always forget. I'm like, is it 120, 140? So I was like, usually I said 120, but today I went a little, little higher. I was feeling a little risque. I like it. But Going bold. That stuff is boozy as fuck. I got to say, um, mm-hmm. I had like sips of it and I was like, I'm getting hammered off the fumes. Got to dial it back then. Yeah. It was, it was damn good. So yeah. if you haven't had Jaeger tea or glue run, when you come off the mountain, you go to Opera ski and you're in Europe. I think it should be everywhere in the world. You come off, you're cold as fuck. You grab this, this mug with this hot, 
you know, this nice hot liquid. It's elixir. And you just like sip it, you get all warm and you feel great. It feels like Christmas every day. Yeah, that's one of the things we've talked about many a time is how there's just not nearly enough Gluvine or your Jaeger tea yeah. at Apre places in the States in North America. But I don't know. Eventually, I think we're going to have to maybe open up our own place and just serve that so, and nachos. Uh, so we went to Switzerland, and that's where I, I came up with the idea of, hey, let me make Jaeger tea because it looked pretty good and it was, it was great tasting. And then I realized after realizing that they use the bottled one, that's like super sweet. So I make one that's not as sweet. And then your glue line is freaking phenomenal. So you definitely have to make it at home. And every year I make it always a little bit different. Yeah. It just, it's one of those things. It's, it is what it is that year. And almost like, you know, a lot of the lot of high end, high end breweries, you know, like they, they make whatever ingredients that they get that are the best. And, and if they don't make it again, they don't make it again. I'd like three-year-old Deserano that's in there. Time to use it. Who would have Who would have known? <laughs> it's got to go. All right, Brian. So, so what are you going to I mentioned this beer. Of, was it last week? Maybe two weeks ago. Almost as like a joke about how ridiculous it sounded, and it does sound ridiculous. But damn, is it super good? So this is again from uh, our buddy John, podcast friend John. Nice. He Thanks, got John. me this from burlington beer company which i think if we tally up for the year the different you know if we like we should do like infographics about all the different things we talk about mentions if we had the number of breweries (laughs) that could be dangerous (laughs) I, i i think burlington beer company has to be my most drank brewery for the year there's been at Dude, least five or six. I'm thinking, are we getting sponsored by them or something? Like every week, one would think. But this we was, should spot at this point, right? We should reach out to them. So this beer, this their uh, sixth anniversary ale, is a sextuple dry hopped triple India pale ale. Sextuple dry hop. I don't even know what that means. I know it means six, but six I don't, times dry hopped. I don't know. Yes. Is that legal? In Vermont, apparently it is. I don't know if I don't know if taking it across state lines is uh is legal, but so weed's not legal, but six times dry hopping is, is. weed is legal. You just can't sell it, man. <laughs> you can't you just, sell it, buy it, or consume it, but it's legal. No, you can trade it for like a bag of barley if you wanted to. <laughs> it's mm. like, hey man, how much barley for this weed? It's like hey, it's just like two two giant sacks. Does that work? Could you trade a beer for weed? Probably. Who could stop you? That's a really damn good beer. So why not? Yeah. So this is a dynamite beer. I mean, it, for being a triple IPA, sex tuple hopped, it really sex doesn't tuple. drink that heavy. That's the sex hops in there. I mean, you're getting tons of citrus. It's thick. It's it really has no bitterness or burn after maybe a tiny little bit kind of lingering late as like really late on your palate, but just tasty for something as hardcore. I think it's like 11% or something. Damn. Yeah, 11%. It does not drink like an 11% beer. That's a night night so, beer. Drinking it slowly. Oh, I have to counter the coffee. I just drank. I just drank a giant cup of coffee. That's I like don't... the chokehold beer. Like that's choking you out. The UFC. Um, I'm going out. I'm hoping so. I'm hoping so. Speaking of UFC, did you see the Tyson fight? Did not see it, no. It, did you? I, no, I didn't. I wanted to, but we were away at a hockey tournament, and I'm like, I was he really hoping. phenomenal for his age, man. Does he? I was hoping it wasn't going to be like a Donald Trump fighting Joe Biden thing, like two old guys like pawing at each other. Like, No, nah, it was a gunfight. Yeah. And they then were, it ended in a draw. I'm like, come on. It was it was charity, so I could see how it ends gonna, in a draw. But well, they're gonna set it up for another one or have Tyson fighting again. I mean, he's got that that itch back. And it's funny because a couple of years ago he was kind of fat, didn't want to train yeah. anymore, and then he just he he's said, now. He's jacked again. Yeah, dude. He's just he's just a freak. how many rematches do you think it's gonna take for these guys to just open up the gate and just let it go on each other? I don't know. Roy Jones is a good fighter too. Wasn't the greatest Tyson, but he's a solid fighter. Way up there too, yeah. 
I have no idea. All I know is it gives me gives me hope for the future where these guys can be this jacked and this competitive and you know i mean they're fighting like they're in their 30s and they're in their 50s you know that gives me hope that when i get to that age i can take some sort of supplements or whatever and you know still be able to go out there and and you know shred a full day of skiing yeah that's what that's the positive i'm taking from all this so my stepson 13 year old in the house was all like Oh yeah, we should watch that fight. I'm like, oh, you know, Mike Tyson. Let's yeah, pay, you got seventy bucks for the paper. He's like, he's like, no, no, I want to see the YouTuber guy fight. Oh, the, what's fight. His, the Paul guy like, and Nate Robinson. Yeah, I'm like, really, man, that's that not was, a real fight. That was the fight to watch. It, yeah, I heard it was, but it's oh, funny. He's like, oh, no. no, I didn't. Oh, but he said he's like, no, no, that's the real fight. He's like, he's a real fighter. I'm like, is he a real fighter? Like. Does he fight on a regular basis? He's not a real fighter. I don't know. He beat a basketball player. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like this is where we're going now. So, yeah, Dude, you got it. You got to find that clip, man. I mean, he fucking knocked him out. It was like a Did video he? game knockout. Good. Yeah, man. it wasn't like a real fighters <laughs> fighting knockout. It was like a. I want to see game. that motherfucker step into the ring with Mike Tyson. I want to see who wins be there. Dead. He <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Dead. If you thought 11 sec- seconds was really quick for Mike Tyson, was that the quickest or was it nine? Like it was some crazy thing. Oh, I don't know. I, well, I just I remember, remember the, the, the Spinks one was 91 seconds. Oh, that's that's and a long Spinks, one. And Spinks was like a legit contender, undefeated, and Tyson just destroyed him. So I was living in North Carolina at the time, and I remember my boss invited everybody over. I'm going to rent the Tyson fight. But that was the 11 second fight. He went to get a goddamn beer, missed the whole fucking thing. <laughs> We're like, ah, he was the asshole that paid for it. That everybody else in the house watched it, and he's watching it on the replay. Like, uh, goddamn, you gotta watch. You gotta no, time the that. Fastest w- he said the shortest one was 91 seconds. Was it? The spin. No, yeah. the- oh, one was 30 seconds. Mike Tyson knocked out his opponent and son of former heavyweight champion Joe Frazier, Marvis Frazier, with an Marv- uppercut. Marvis? Yeah. I thought there was one. Maybe I'm thinking of uh, Conor McGregor. <laughs> I might be getting UFC and boxing mixed up. Well, I remember watching that McGregor Aldo fight up at Killington with you. That was 11 seconds, wasn't it? That 12 or 13, something like that. Yeah. That was, that the was, one. A, that was a great. Freaking weekend up there, man! He just came out, and just popped him. And that was it. Yeah, fucking Aldo went down. So anyway, hoping this beer does not knock me out that quickly because we got a whole podcast to go through. I think we'll be yeah. good. So welcome to the podcast. This is it. This is where there we're you at. Go. That's where we're at. So now we're gonna take a quick historic little trip in the gondola. Legislation's going on. We are recording this on December 4th, and this is a very historic day. If you are a fan or advocate for cannabis legalization or freedom or just people's goddamn rights, all of these goddamn House, rights in our classes. House approves federal marijuana legalization bill in historic vote. So the House of Representatives has passed a bill federally legalizing marijuana in a historic vote. It's the day that cannabis reform advocates have been building toward for years, a full floor vote to end prohibition in a chamber of Congress. Prior to the bill's approval in a 228 to 164 vote, Republican lawmakers spent days criticizing their Democratic counterparts for even bringing the legislation to the floor. How dare you? The good Lord would never want this to be legalized like these these self-righteous politicians on both both fucking sides like yep all they care about is just controlling people and controlling their thoughts and their money they're all full of shit but there's seats that are going to change hand now so i i almost wonder like it's kind of good that seats are changing hand because you know what? That's maybe some motivation to say, finally, hey, let's vote on this goddamn thing, get right? Some old dickheads out of here and get people who actually have a term limits, man. Why are there no term limits? Exactly. Term limits. 
Well, because the people who are making the people who want to be in there for 10 terms are the ones who are controlling whether term limits exist or not. Of course, they control their salary, their benefits, everything, right? Yeah. Hey, let's vote ourselves a, a, a raise. Of course, by landslide, they all get together and everybody votes lockstep. Hey, you know what? There's one asshole that voted no. Yeah. Yeah, but. it's pretty awesome that, that this has passed. Now, they're saying that it's not going to go to Senate till probably next month. And they're also saying because it's Republican controlled, it's unlikely that the bill will pass. So I got to go back to my schoolhouse rock because <laughs> I'm just a bill sitting on Capitol Hill. Mm -hmm. And they say what it passes the, the House, then it goes to the Senate. Does the Senate have two thirds or it has to be e just I think, a, I think 50, 51. 50. Okay. And then it goes to the president who could veto it. The president can I remember veto they, it. But then you got to come back at like 67 or yeah, two thirds to override right. the president. I think it's. Two oh, thirds. that's right. So he vetoes, it goes back and you say, fuck you. Two thirds. We're back in weed. Exactly. Yes. Boom. See schoolhouse rock didn't do the weed scenario in that <laughs> way. <laughs> Not exactly. And if anybody doesn't know schoolhouse rock, you got to look that shit up. It was awesome. They used to actually be intelligent cartoons on. Not that like Rick yes. and Morty and South Park aren't intelligent because they are brilliant, but on a different level, different level. Yeah. I, you can't watch, let kids watch Rick and Morty. Dude, I, I can barely watch it. <laughs> Dude, I'm holding a 13 year old back from watching fucking family guy. Like yeah. I love family guy, but I'm like, yeah, don't watch it. It's, it's not good. <laughs> not, not the time, my friend. Yeah. It's not good. It's fucking great and hilarious. <laughs> my favorite show ever, but don't watch it. Yeah, don't watch it. But yeah, this, this is huge news. I mean, they said five Republicans actually supported it and six Democrats opposed. So, you know, again, the I think the the Senate isn't that far off. It's what, 52, 48? So, you know, you get a couple people, you know, a couple Republicans going against the, the party line and bam, we have weed legalized. Um, oh. Well, why, Trump, why wouldn't you want legal I, weed? Well, because, you know, you have a very outdated point of view. And again, you want to control people. People who are invested in private prisons or police force unions, they don't want it to be legal because of all the people they have to let out of those prisons, which means there's gonna be less prison guards. Which yeah, hey man, if you had if you chose a miserable career like that and you're out of a job, sorry. It's it, we shouldn't be locking people up for such nonsense as holding a plant on them. Yeah, that's crazy. It's, it's crazy. It's maddening. It's maddening. It's been stupid the way it's been enforced over the years. It's been super, you know, it's been extremely racist. There's, you know, we all know that in the seventies when they made marijuana illegal, it was all done to keep, you know, protesters and riots, give give the authority and the ability for governments and police forces to arrest people that were fighting against the beliefs of the president at the time. So it's yeah. extremely gross and vile that it's ha been going on for so long for something so innocuous. So, and even better, it's going to allow research. That's what we need is more legitimate information. You know, you could have some people saying, Hey man, this thing cures all my ails, ailments. Marijuana cures everything. And you have people who are like, Oh, there's no science behind it. It can't do anything. Like th the truth is in the middle somewhere, but to at least be able to test and figure out and, you know, decode all the different cannabinoids and see which ones actually can benefit because there is definitely some benefits to CBD uh, yeah. for health, for, for joint health. Uh, so let's just get some real testing done and, and real cases and studies done so we can have some, find more positive uses and not just have something illegal that's been made illegal for the wrong reasons for, for decades. Well, and I think this goes in hand with, um, was a few days ago, the UN had a vote and they reclassified cannabis as a less dangerous drug. So that's a big deal because now you're talking about where countries that made it legal like Canada, now you're talking about other countries are saying, recognizing, okay, it's not as dangerous. Maybe we could trade it. Maybe it, it, they have old treaties going way back. And that's another weird thing. There's like treaties for the un that go back about cannabis between countries and then there's own country things like 
it's it's a whole complicated fucking mess, and this is why nothing gets done quickly in politics. Well, they in had mar- countries or between countries. They had know? marijuana classified at the same level mm-hmm. as heroin, meth, and cocaine. Yeah, that's totally fucking madness. different levels. Yeah, that's madness. You take a meth head and somebody smoking weed, two totally different things. Plus, there's who would you rather actual- be around? But there's actual metal medical evidence that like like cannabis has like medical properties. And hopefully this opens up the door to actually explore is this another alternative to opioids? I mean, that's one of the biggest concerns that I personally have is I don't want an addictive opioid. You know, I don't even want a necessarily a THC high from uh, something I can take. You know, why not get a CBD, no THC high, uh, but something that can give you like the benefits of like pain management and stuff like that. Like, you know, why, why can't we explore that? Yeah. Um, All natural, non-addictive pain management. Like that's, yeah. Seems like a home run there. You grow poppy seeds, you get opium and you have this line of opioids. Well, you grow marijuana and you can have a whole line of, you know, cannabis cannabis cannabinoids or whatever why wouldn't you explore that route you buy a bunch of fish dvds exactly listening to like live jam bands you know that's (laughs) that's the worst that's gonna happen it's really not that grateful dead gotta you know call now nobody even drives so you don't have to worry about people being on the road they either take an uber or they're calling uber eats when they get the munchies listen i allegedly drove high once because of unforeseen circumstances as in my wife didn't want to drive and it was two in the morning. I had taken a edible, like a, a cookie, a cannabis cookie. <laughs> I drove Dude. like, I drove like You're 10 miles it. under <laughs> the speed limit the whole time. <laughs> There's nobody on the road. I'm just driving slow. <laughs> I have allegedly maybe driven drunk before and it is completely different where so when you're different. driving when you're driving drunk you feel like you know you're in a video game you gotta drive faster and you gotta get to wherever you're going and you know things are going oh, you think quickly you can't do any wrong you're just like i'm i'm sliding through traffic yeah, you're I'm like you're working. in god mode when you take an edible you feel like everybody's watching you and everything's <laughs> like like everyone knows that you're high you're like that car they know i'm high that cop over there knows i'm high like it's just it's a very very different feel allegedly for both of these things uh, yeah, I, it was really was not nothing. Gonna to I talked to somebody at the dispensary, right? And they're like, okay, there's this one strain that a lot of people use before they go to the gym. They're like, it it promotes vascular, you know, your your blood flowing and stuff like that. So it's a great um, pre workout, you know, thing to have a little bit of, and you get a good workout, and like people swear by it. So, and there's medical evidence behind it. So I hear that. Week goes by and I'm thinking, I'm like, you know what? Fuck, I might, I, I should try this. So I decide to take some. And of course I take the, you know, I'm not, I don't do a lot of smoking. So I take the, um, you know, the tincture, the uh, sublingual. So I drop it in and it takes a little while to hit in. Usually for me, it's about 45 minutes to an hour. So I'm dicking around, you know, whatever. And, and I finally get in the car to go to the gym. Well, I get in the car, start zipping to the gym, and I hit the first traffic light, and all of a sudden it fucking hits me. And I'm like <laughs> sitting there saying, oh, my God, this thing fucking – I took too much. Was it like that coffee shop in Telluride? Oh, yeah, it was. And I'm fucking white knuckling going like under the speed <laughs> Just like, am I in the lines? And I fucking drive. <laughs> like, it's like the opposite of a drunk driving. It was experience. so bad. And then I get to the gym and I had a pretty good workout. And I'm like, and then it started wearing off by the time I left. I'm on the treadmill, just like, oh my God, I hope I, fu- I hope this wears off. It was bad. <laughs> you're like, it's it's like you're, you run like 13 miles. You're like, whoa, I didn't even know that ran. <laughs> it was goddamn terrifying. Yeah. I was going the speed, oh, the speed limit. It was, yeah. uh, and it's not a fast road. It's like a 35 mile an hour road. Oh, man. I'm like, I'm that guy. Like, is he, you know, 90 years old? Like, no, I'm just high as fuck right now. So, yeah. Yeah, So great job. House of Representatives passing the bill to legalize marijuana. We'll see where it goes. Probably nowhere this month, but this is the season for miracles. So we'll see. Yeah. 
This so is now, the giving season. So now we're going to roll right into the ski news. And since we're recording this on Friday, this will have already happened, but a winter storm has been issued for parts of Mass, Massachusetts, ahead of a nor'easter this weekend. Look out, all you mass holes, you dirty bastards. So Massachusetts into Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, that whole area is going to be hit with some snow this weekend, which is great and really needed because last week up in this area, we had a, a warm, rainy, just dumping on Monday, and it really messed things up. I know a bunch of the ski areas around here, they had to start from scratch because all the snow they made Thanksgiving week was just wiped out from the stupid storm. So it looks like this one could be dropping up to a foot in certain places, which is, I mean, Damn. which is great. That was what they were showing for like central Massachusetts, again, into New Hampshire and Maine as well. And Vermont, I think, is going to get a little bit, but not as much as, as those areas. So we've been uh, we've been needing this. So this is a, a very, very welcome gift this first week in December. So hopefully uh, everything ends up being as heavy as they say it's going to be. You just got to hope and pray, right? <laughs> Huck and pray, hope and pray. <laughs> All right, next up we got um, Blister Magazine or Media Group did a, uh, a, a survey, um, and they asked reviewers um, selections for five, four, and three, sque three ski quivers previously and now they wanted to ask them to trim them down to what would they pick if everything was down to just two pair of skis that you're you were you had um in their I ski career. seeing this article because this kind of stuff is always so intriguing and fascinating to me yeah but it get it kind of helps you narrow down what you should be looking at if you're looking to buy new skis right so they ask him uh, they asked that everybody a few questions they said What's your two ski quiver uh, for where you ski most and why? If you didn't do any backcountry touring, what would your two ski quiver be for inbounds only skiing? And what's your two ski, ski quiver for the next three years, regardless of location? Uh, what skis were most difficult to leave off your list? What ski do you imagine has the greatest likelihood of making your list uh, if and when you get to ski it? And if you had to choose a single brand from which to build your two ski quiver, which company would you pick? So I think it's a lot of great questions to at least bunch start that dialogue. Yeah, a bunch of variables in the the way they're asking them. Yeah, and you, it leaves people some options to have a little description for why, right? Like you want to know why, not just what would you pick. Like what would you pick is good, it's telling, but you want to know why. So um, Luke Kappa, they, uh, they asked – like their response was they split the time between lift access and, and back country. And they actually said that ski number one would be the do everything uh, touring ski. The moment wildcat tour one, one Oh eight. Um, well, like there's a ton of stuff on here and a ton of different people who, who answered these questions. The yeah. cool thing about, we don't need to go through all of them, but the cool no. thing about it is everybody is in different places and well, not all different places, but you know, people are, some people are East coasters. Some people are Colorado, Utah, Whistler. So you can actually see what they're getting based on their location, which I, I think is really see. valuable. Yeah. Because, because, you know, people have, it's so easy to just go, I'm going to get this big fat ski and, but I'm only skiing East coast resorts, you know, terrain. Right. I Some get like why resorts where they are, they're like going for fat powder skis. Like, of course, right? You see it, you you see it all the time. So that's what's so nice about it is that you know, again, there's different people who are you know in different terrains talking about what they're going to be skiing. And these are you know, blister review. Their stuff is some of the the best the reviews that they do in there. So if you if you're really jonesing for you know, uh, another pair of skis. I know for me, I was just like looking at these and I'm like, Oh, I want to be the, I want to buy these. I want to buy those. This is a great place to at least get you started to really, you know, cause again, magazine reviews are, are great, but these are like the real people talking about exactly the skis and the bindings are on where they're living and why they're doing it. So 
I actually like Kara Willard. Uh, she responds saying, full disclosure, this is my current ski quiver because she just had full ACL replacement. Um, so she has two go-tos and that's it, which is pretty cool. Again, all kinds of different people uh, doing all kinds of different terrain, giving you different opinions. So it's yeah, it's a really nice. Reasons. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's a really fun read and maybe you want to just buy like eight pairs of skis, which is the opposite of the two ski quiver there. But, you know, kind of like when you look at your ski quiver, you should be down to like, you usually have a favorite and you have another favorite. It's the two ski quiver, right? That That's what they're talking about. Like, why why do you need that many? You know, you could always demo if, if you're on a day where you want a different ski, right? And just looking in your closet or your garage and seeing like eight pairs of skis is so awesome. It's just, yeah. I and mean, then you feel like you're just lo- like a luxurious, fancy person. Cause you're like, well, I got my, <laughs> my powder skis. I got my touring skis. I got my East coast resort. I got my big mountain, you know, like it's just, it's almost, again, it's like a display your of ski power. Jumping skis, your ski dancing skis. Like, you know, you got cross country skis. Yeah. You got a little bit of everything. Exactly. Yeah. But it depends where you live and what you do. Right. If you're traveling, like if you were getting on a plane to travel, and you can only fit two skis in your bag. Like, this is a good question, right? Yeah. Well, the skis that I bought, I bought those Black Crows. And honestly, I don't know why I bought them. I just wanted them. You know, I, I couldn't say like, oh, well, this makes sense because of how much I ski on them. Shredding I think I skied on them for four days. I think I skied the power Killington, right? I skied four days on those things. I think yeah. they're awesome and I love them. But was it the smartest thing to buy? No. Impulse buy, but you're happy about it. Do you come to me for smart decision making? No. Did you come to us because we've got a charming and wonderful perspective and sense of humor about things? I'll tell you, if like every other person in the friggin' world right now, I would want to buy a, a new touring setup. But because of certain things happening behind the scenes, I'm going to hold off a little while on that. But that's, you know, that's what everyone wants to buy right now because they want to make sure they can get on the mountain if whether resorts are closed or they want to get to some backcountry access area. I would, I, still I would look at this article because that's my two. There you go. Right there. Here's my your quiver. DPS and my, uh, my Brahmas. There you go. I think I got to so, get rid of the Brahmas though. Why is that? I don't know when I'm going to use them. Yeah. Well, they're, they're, they're perfect. East coast in resort skis that's what they're made for and they do a great job doing that my dps has worked just as well i don't know yeah yeah sometimes you got to go really really different from uh you know i don't know how those are pretty similar both those skis but i I like that you have the powder skis yeah they're just they're big mountain skis and they're just they're they're a blast in the right terrain but i don't live in that terrain i visit there occasionally but I still like them. I'm glad I have them. But. I want to see you do the black f- backflip with those. There you go. 2022 is the year of the backflip. The black diamond black flip. We'll call there it a black go. flip. The black flip. So this article came out last week, and this I posted this on Twitter. I saw a bunch of other people posted too. It was just a rage inspiring article. Someone trying to get some headlines, sell some ads article is going skiing is a terrible idea right now the pandemic has forced governments into making impossible choices keeping skiing resorts shut isn't one of them Hmm. this is from bloomberg opinion and first off again it's like such a clickbaity thing to to put on there of course every skier and snowboarder is going to look at this and get all pissed off when you really look at the activity of skiing and snowboarding for the most part you're you have a mask on anyway and you're socially distancing you don't want to be too close to anybody when you're on the slopes perhaps trams gondolas those are the the, the trouble situations now but all the resorts <clears throat> are doing excuse me <clears throat> goddamn covid yeah, they're doing yeah I'm wa- you're on watch I'm on watch. They're doing some sort of management on there, cutting capacity to either a quarter or half. So if you've addressed that, there should be minimal problems for the sport. Yes, lodges too will be a problem. Apres ski scene. 
but the actual sport of skiing really can be minorly tweaked to make it so it's not a problem. So this article just, you know, they talked about, you know, Europe and how, you know, in uh, Italy especially, they're trying to shut down winter sports across Europe. Germany, Italy, hmm. France. They're the ones that are kind of behind this now. Um, the Swiss are kind of like, yeah, whatever you guys do, it's just don't bother us. Just like, yeah. just like every war, don't bother us. Yeah, we'll manage your money. Don't bother us. Yeah, and it it does. Of course, it has the that clickbaity headline, and then it says in here, skiing itself isn't a big potential COVID spreader. Whether it's cross country or downhill, it's not hard to enforce social distancing. And then, of course, talks about the lifts and that pray ski and chalet. They mentioned Ishkil too, of course, which was Dude, that photo. I know exactly where that is. That's the Ishkil waiting for the tram. Is that? That's where we saw the guys uh, dressed up as leprechauns doing the dance for everybody while we were waiting for the tram right there. On the left, that's the, the balcony they were on. Trafana. Alper, is that it? Um, I don't think that's it. You don't think so? I mean, it looks like, like a lot of different European ski towns. Does it actually, if you click on it, asking for trouble? I mean, it could be. I think Trafana was uh, Ishko. Let's see. Might have been. I mean, I do mention Ishko, of course, in the article which has been linked to cases in 45 countries after partying skiers brought the virus home with them. Yeah. You know, what? don't look up Ishka. You find a lot of really crazy shit. Yeah. Also too, what we knew back in March versus what we know now is very different. And I think people are a little smarter and you know what? You're not going to get the big partiers who just want to go there to, to booze it up. They're not going to be there in those towns this year. So I think, if you're a skier, you're in a way you're kind of glad because it's going to be less distractions, less, you know, <clears throat> rowdy folks around more. If you want to focus on your skiing, this is the year to do it because if you go midweek. It's just not going to be super busy. I Dude, that's it. The Trafana Alper, the hotel Trafana Royale. So, so that was Ishko. It was Ishko. Wow. I know that scene. We were hanging out there watching for a while. Yeah. It yeah, it does look kind of familiar now that you mention it, yeah. That's where we stood online, you had to wait and you waited on that line, then you you went to the right and then that's when you get on the, the tram and go up. Yeah. That was so awesome how close we were to the center of town to the tram. That was right across the street. That's fucking right awesome. across the street. That was so super easy every morning. God damn it. And then yeah, towns like to fuck it up for everybody. Towns like that, though, Ishkil, like that's, you know, you, you, the skiing is amazing there, but you don't, it's not, you're not going there to ski as your first, you know, you'd go to other places first. If you were like, I got to travel all the way over here. You might go to like a Kitzbühel or maybe to Switzerland. Pretty good damn or, scene, though. No. Just got, yeah. just. I loved it. I mean, it was, it was fantastic, but. We had great snow too. We had like a foot of fresh powder. Like that was we nice. Did. We did. We had a great day. But the town's going to suffer big time this year. And, you know, you, you want these places to, to stay open and to, to stay true to what they were. And, you know, hopefully this is when you go back, back to that place. When yeah. nobody else goes, this is when we go. It's like when you see people like going to Chernobyl now. That's what Ishka's that? going to be like. It's going to be like the Chernobyl of the Alps. Dude, I bought 40 acres in Chernobyl. Fucking land is cheap there. <laughs> Wonderful, right? 100 years from now, your relatives are going to be like, man, he must have been a genius. He knew this was going to be a gold mine here. Who who knew that like radioactive stuff is going to turn everything into gold, right? Who knew, right? Who knew? Genius. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Last up we have on the uh, ski news is an article talking about the intense snowblower built to clear the Pikes Peak Cog Railway of 10 foot drifts. So I've been to Pikes Peak. Have you? I have not. Pretty awesome. We drove up in a car. Hats Peak or Pikes Peak? Uh, Pikes Peak. Hats Peak uh -huh. on the Indy Pass. Yeah. 
<laughs> Drove up in a car uh, a long time ago. My brother's in the Air Force Academy. Went to visit him, and uh, it's pretty cool. I gotta say, it's fucking high up there. Everything's everything's tall. So there's a ton of tourists that go up, and they're talking about uh, the pass that goes up there. Um, just it gets a ton of snow. So uh, they did a 100 million dollar renovation job that's going to be completed in spring of 2021. Uh, and when it's done, they're going to run it year round with the help of a special specialized snowblower ordered from uh, Switzerland of all things. Right. So built by Zog, it's Zaug. Mon- Zaug. Zaug. Uh, the, the snowblower uh, uses cutting reels nearly four feet across to grind away drifts as deep as 10 feet wide and as as deep as 10 feet and as wide as 20 according to trains magazine so it's going to enable the the swiss built uh mad max looking snowblower to break up 4200 tons of snow per hour so that's a shit ton of snow that really and, is. They're, and they're saying it could spit the snow about uh, uh, about as far as 100 feet from the line so it looks like a monster, like a, like this is a Franken Frankenstein monster thing. But uh, it's pretty awesome that they're doing this. They're just building some big ass snowblower to like, all right, we got a problem with this with this snow. Um, let's yeah, it get looks it. like if you took get a regular, like a regular driveway snowblower, and just like jacked it up by like ten x. Yeah, like size and everything, like everything, and then it's got the double sh- the double barrel shooters. Yeah, with the, the and the it's all shooter. powder coated and stuff. It looks pretty badass, man. It looks really badass. Yeah, so I love they're saying, they're saying they're expecting a ton of people to uh to go up to Pikes Peak. I I didn't realize. When I went way back, I was little, and uh, I remember there's a ton of people. Like there's a line to get you know, to go up there just to drive up. And uh, we drove up, but I think they have like a funicular or some kind of tow thing that takes you up and shit. Um, it's pretty interesting to see, like they're putting that much money into the fact that that many people visit. So very interesting. Well, I think a lot of too is all the cannabis tax revenue that the, the state of Colorado has received. They can do all kinds of great projects like this. That's it. So if you took all the cannabis money that came in from all the states in the nation, right, it would be a shit ton of money, right? I think if you gave that to Atlantic City, Atlantic City would look the same in 10 years that it does today, if not worse. Just saying. I got to tell you, (laughs) I saw an article recently about Atlantic City. It says actually doing better than they expected this year, not because of the gambling. Because they got rid of all the shady scumbag politicians and brought Good. new people in. Good. Because that's the only thing. Like I always look at Atlantic City. And I'm like, they have a lot of revenue coming in from all these casinos, and they never put it back into the community. It just went. It disappeared. Like nobody yeah. knows what happened to all that money. Well, I don't know. Yeah. You know. I don't know. Yeah. It's true. Casinos on casinos, and they didn't. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've been to Atlantic City, New Jersey. And you have vacation time to burn, and you want to feel confident about and good about yourself. Not a bad place to go. It's like a real life leaving Las Vegas, like with with that movie, right? Oh, Elizabeth Shue and Nicolas Cage. Yeah, it's a great movie. Yes. Great movie, but about Las Vegas. You take that. That's that's your weekend. That's your one week trip to Atlantic City. It's just. It's such a. It's depressing. It's a bad a place. Bit. Yeah. Yeah, I've had a, a fun ass time with Harry. It is fun. Harry, our buddy Harry's down there. Go to yeah. Ducktown. Like, there's a lot of hidden shit that you can. Knife and Fork. That place was fantastic. That restaurant. Knife and Fork. They have the Irish bar. That old Irish bar. What the hell is the name of it? I think oh, it's the called Irish, the Irish bar. bar. Yeah. I'm great. Um, yeah. I had a really, 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 really bad night there drinking once in uh, way back in the day. Who had bat- a bachelor party and. A lot of, a lot of nastiness consumed, and uh, it's, it's one of those places, man. Damn, 
Yeah. See, the problem is they, they never say what happens in Atlantic City stays in Atlantic City. That's just like publicized. Oh, yeah. It gets out. Like, you got to watch it. You got to check yourself. You got to have a handler. Like, handler's a good thing. Yeah. You should get you one of those. Go, you got to go prepared. Yeah. <laughs> so, being prepared is very important. And speaking of being prepared, let's get into the main topic now. We had a bunch of interviews the last couple of weeks, which have been fantastic. But this week, we don't have one. This week, we are here to give some guidance and some tips, perhaps, for those who are still looking for Christmas gifts for the skiers and snowboarders that they love. We just kind of found some, I don't know, it's not crazy. It's not super unique. We have just found some fun, cool stuff that we found interesting that we think random. is super yeah random super helpful there's one shameless plug in there too as there always needs to be of course but mario do you want to kick off our list here and and what we've come up with so i'll kick it off with the hand warmers um so i know brian found these uh rechargeable hand warmers uh fat you you saw these on amazon um, and it's a hand warmer and, and power bank, which is pretty cool. I like that that they did the uh, the twofer, the, the twofer. Well, um, it's, it's, the first thing like, to start off, the reason why I even put this in here is, you know, hand warmers. You know, they are great on those really really bitter cold days, but it sucks that you just buy them and throw them out. Like, how many people are just like chucking all these hand warmers on a really cold day? And like, what's the like, what happens to those things when they go into the the giant garbage heap you know do they do they break down are they like what, what's what they inside they sit and they actually search out all the starbucks coffee cups that everybody else chucked out and saving the environment that are made out of paper and they merge with them and they make a big ball that eventually evaporates i guess and that becomes animantium which is what wolverine is made out of his exoskeleton exactly. his, uh, his skeleton so this is how we make new minerals look right? at that we're just creating so, a whole new periodic table. The garbage dump of today. <laughs> the is periodic the table of garbage dump. Is the mine of tomorrow, right? There's going to be people working in the mines, the garbage mines. Like, go out and mine out some some metals, right? I 100% believe that. And I, when I throw things away that I feel like I shouldn't, I just go, this is going to be someone's find 20, 30, 50 years down the road. Look at this. Use gun. <laughs> we don't have rubber <laughs> like this anymore. We ha perhaps there'll be some spacecraft that crashed to the ground that needs like a new O ring for one of yeah. its for <laughs> its going to come down. Like these are great. We need as many of these as we can. This it's like the uh, underpants gnomes in South Park back in the day. <laughs> That's right. So rechargeable hand warmers, they a great <laughs> idea. And I actually told Brian that like I bought some cheap ass ones. I gotta say like five or six years now. Where you charge them with a USB. And they work pretty well. They didn't. They didn't get really super hot, but yeah, I gave you a little stuff or whatever. And I had them for a while. But I tell you, the reason I didn't use them is because I had a GoPro, a fucking phone, a bunch of chargers, extra batteries, uh, these hand warmers. Um, what else? Some more electronics. Like there's a ton of electronics that you bring and after a while. You're like, you know, headset for the fucking for my helmet, then all the other equipment you got to bring. And it's just another thing. And after a while, it's like, OK, I'd rather I'd rather take the chance. I'd rather buy better gloves and not freeze my hands. How about there that? You go. So I got my Hestras. I got the little lobster claw ones. Fucking keeps my hands nice and toasty. It's funny that they call them hand warmers because really they put make whatever's whatever you put next to it they make it warm well think about the idea of like what makes a piece of electronics give off heat it's really bad conducting right bad energy transfer so it's creating heat so it's actually shorting out and you're putting it in your hand <laughs> to go mm -hmm. down the mountain and make <laughs> warmer like it's good it's just short of bursting into flames but you're going to put it on your hands. Yeah. It just sounds weird. I don't know. Yeah. The other hand warmers are creepy too. It's like a chemical reaction. It's like, let's do a little science experiment in a little 
bag and put it in your hand, like in, in your, closed space. In closed space, that doesn't cause cancer, I'm sure. You know, yeah. just saying, <laughs> it's probably safe to eat. I'm sure it's fine. All right, so next up. But these are good. If for some reason looking for a nice little thing, somebody gets cold. This might get people out there skiing a little bit more. There you go. If it I'm works. Gonna, over. I'm going to skip the second one and go to the third one because this thing is pretty freaking badass. This is a little more oh. expensive. This is the Envo electric snow bike kit. Did you check this out? I saw it real quick and I love snow bikes. But this looks like has a little extra little zip on it. Well, this one's a little bit crazy. So this is the company is Envo and the snow bike kit turns your bicycle into a pedal assist snowmobile ready to take on the winter season. Designed so to, too. Designed to uh, be assembled easily with basic tools. The snow bike comes with CNC aluminum parts, a hub mounted electric motor track and snowboard <laughs> to replace the front wheel. 1200 watt motor makes 90 pound feet of torque and is powered by a 48 volt lithium ion battery pack that can go up to four hours with continuous pedal assist. Hmm. So you need your own frame, but you can add this front and you know, this back to it. So you got a little, a little motor, a 90 pound feet of torque, 1200 watt motor. Now I remember a couple of years ago, we interviewed those skeezy, the folks from skeezy. And that seemed like a really cool product. But again, like how often would you have this little, this machine, this motor around with you? Like, what are you going to do with it? With this thing, this thing, it's a bike, which is still a little bit big, but you do have folding bikes that people take along. Maybe the next iteration of this, it can somehow fold up, be backpacked, and you can use it instead of having to get a lift ticket. You just ride your snow bike up, ski down, ride your snow bike up, ski down. Repeat until your four hour battery life is over. But this is like, why not just put something with a little baby seat on the treads in the back to propel you and you ski up like a skeezy. And then if it's that small, you just chuck it on your back and then ski down. The same. What about if what about you use yourself as the frame and you use your skis hmm. on your hands form of a ski bike? Right? Well, yeah, you become the frame. Hmm. So you attach the motor to the back of you and you put some sort of like gloves with bindings and you snap your gloves with bindings or your uh boot clips into your skis and you kind of downward facing dog as a bike up the mountain. Hmm. You could do that or you could take the lift up and just ski down. We're just thinking outside <laughs> the, uh, outside the gondola right now. We're trying to think of, cause the, cause who wouldn't want that freedom? Just cruise up the hill. There's gotta be an easy way to do it. Yeah. It's called having a helicopter. Fucking have make it. some money. And have a helicopter and do whatever the fuck you want in life. That's what I'm didn't, saying. Didn't James Bond have like a helicopter hat where he can just kind of have the propellers come out and just take off? James Bond can do whatever he wants. Yeah. He get a he get a job like I want to go to the top of uh, some little mountain. Just drop me off there. Boom, he's there. Yep. So James this Bond. is this seems pretty badass. I gotta tell you, I like it. Does it. seem pretty badass. I like the the idea of the ski bike. All right, so next up, I'm going to jump into one that I found like off the reservation here. Um, this is something one of our friends sent us uh, like last week. And it's something, you know, during COVID, a lot of people, me included, are a little bummed because travel's restricted. It's a little hard to get to places. And I'm afraid to go, go some places and travel and not be able to even ski because they have reservations and a whole bunch of stuff going on. So there's uh, homesick, which is the, the name of the company came up with a ski trip candle. So uh, <laughs> the scent makes you uh, reminds you of a ski trip is what they're saying. And they're saying, you know, 
a cozy lodge lined with cedar beams, greet you with a roaring fire and a hot cup of cocoa. Uh, perfect ending to the long day on the slopes. So they're saying it's frosted air scent, top note, and warm amber. I have no <laughs> idea what the fuck that means. Like, I uh, love the sound of it, though. It sounds great, but what does frosted air smell? You know, I think I know what air frost, like the smell of that ionized air, maybe, but uh, mid notes, cinnamon, cocoa, and guiac wood. I have no idea what guiac wood is. Guacamole so. wood? Guacamole wood? <laughs> uh, guac wood. Um, and then the base notes, cedar, vanilla, patchouli. Of course we know that. Patchouli for all the weed places we hang out with, cedar and vanilla, just. Being a, being a human being. You, being you in the mountains, that. yeah. That's right. So it sounds pretty awesome. I think I might want to order one of these. 34 bucks. Uh, but let me tell you, if Type you're in, not able to... Well, you could also put in the the uh, promo code Ski Bum Podcast and get 0% off. 0%. But you will get credit for maybe somebody saying, hey, <laughs> really? why do you keep sending people? Why would someone put this in as the promo code? <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, you should um, do put in ski bomb podcast for the promo code for every website you go to this holiday season and see if anything works <laughs> well this reminds me of something where if you haven't skied in a while like i was off the ski off the ski wagon for probably about i gotta say 10 or 12 years and then i got back on the ski wagon or off the ski wagon. I don't know. What do they say? You're on the wagon if you're not drinking, and you're off the wagon if you are. On the gondola, and you're off the gondola. Just think I was off the way. gondola. Now off you're the, on gondola, the gondola. And now I'm on the gondola. So I was off the gondola for like 12 years. Got back on the gondola, and I love it. This might be the one thing to bring back those beautiful moments, those friendly memories, those great times that you had to get somebody, one of your friends, back to get a pair of balls, grab a pair of tits, and get back on the goddamn gondola. Right? That's what I'm saying. <laughs> just grab the gondola. <laughs> just grab the gondola by the pussy. <laughs> Maybe you want to get your wife, your spouse, your girlfriend back into skiing. Maybe you're a girl and you want your pussy man to get into skiing. You know, maybe this will be like, hey, you know what? You know. You know, a guy like maybe you could take a nice bath and have the ski trip thing and think that this is what a ski trip's like. And then you'll go to a fucking share house and be like, it's it's like Lord of the Flies. It but. smells like just old socks. Exactly. In this place. But, yeah. but if they bring the ski trip candle, it smells like ski trip. Class the place right up. Class it up. So just saying, might be a good idea. You could do worse. I'm, I'm thinking of buying one of these just to see what it smells like. Do it. It might smell like patchouli and ass, so we'll see. We shall see. Next Cedar up, vanilla. this is one that I found, and this is not ski related, but it could be. It is the dry ager, the original dry ager. It is a meat aging refrigerator. If you want to class up the ski house, this is the shit you got to get. Dude, do you want a restaurant quality steak from your own home? You got to get a goddamn dry ager. What you can also do here, you could also, you know, so obviously you think about doing it for steaks. You can also do it for like hams and salamis and charcuterie. Like, imagine if you had the ability and the. You can make your own charcuterie. You can make your own charcuterie. Imagine you had the financial, Damn. you know, you're at the place in your life, you've done well for yourself, where you could build your own house. And you're like, well, what am I going to put in my own house? You know, everyone does the, I want to have, you know, fancy bathrooms and nice big kitchen that's all, right, all wonderful. so you design your own house where are you putting this garage kitchen bedroom <laughs> bathroom closet. i think i think in the auxiliary kitchen because i can't just have one kitchen in a house i need oh. an auxiliary kitchen and the you're gonna have a butcher area aren't you so well, next to yeah. the butcher kitchen yes and the that butcher and that part is gonna be right uh, it's going to have a walkout to a outdoor kitchen barbecue area. 
so that I this have is... that inside. Then I go outside. I have my like crazy salamander for making my steaks. I've got a, nice. a pellet grill. I've got a, a natural gas grill. I got every type of grill I need to, so, to cook whatever I'm making. So let me ask you, knowing your background, mm -hmm. are you packing it with all steak and beef and pork or whatever? Or are we going to have some shankins hanging in there? We're going to go 80% beef. 80% and beef. And and then like a shankin stuck in there. We're we'll definitely going to have a shankin or two. Yeah, some prosciutto, some shankin. Oh, yeah. Goddamn. Like, yeah. like, what's that crazy Spanish ham that costs like, oh. like 200 bucks a pound or whatever? Not that oh, much. The, the jamon. The jamon. Is that they what call it, it jamon, but it's the leg. It's like it's the Spanish version of prosciutto. It's the leg of the the pork, and you you smoke it and you put it on a right. But, but with Spanish, they put it on like this nice little holder, and they just cut yeah, it but off. Yeah, th but there's this certain fancy one that they feed the pigs only acorns. Oh, the acorn one. I forgot what the hell. Yeah, there's the name some. Is. I had that a couple years ago. My my father in law got it for Christmas or New Year's or something. Oh, it was so good. It was like melt in your mouth. Like it was like prosciutto that melted in your mouth. So what you got to do is you got to get your pigs that find the truffles, right? And then when they get old, you, you, you know, butcher them up and you, you put them in there and then you have them with the truffles. So you're eating what they found with them. It's fucked up. Like <laughs> what about, you have it all. In. What about like, you know how they have Kobe beef cows? What about you take your pig and you just give it weed all the time? <laughs> That's a weedy pig. It's like a weed infused prosciutto. Imagine the imagine the barbecued ribs you can make with that. But would it be skunky or would it be good? Like depends, right? It depends on the pig. I guess we have to, we have to experiment. You, you feed it that and in the water you put the uh, sublingual too. So like you get them like <laughs> they'll be high all the time. They're like the highest fucking pigs. It'd be like just give him like a friggin' trough full of tincture and see what the hell happened. Oh, you could have like a whole brand. Like, so what you got to do is farm to table, have your own farm of these weed driven pigs. People will fly in just to like, they'll be like, yeah, you have a meal and you just kind of crunk to table. Out. What you got to do is you have your, your farm next to your restaurant, farm to table, grow your own stuff, have your own pigs and cow that you feed all weed. And in a farm, we grow a lot of weed and other stuff that you serve with your meal. Cook and it all in your farm. They just go and eat. They eat. All the and animals just go. No, no. The animals eat, but then the people go to eat the animals after, right? You know, stuff happens. And they eat. And then afterwards, you have a whole relaxation, like Buddhist meditation place. Everybody just chills the Dude, fuck out. Maybe watch a light missing, show. You're missing the most obvious, beautiful part of that. The animals eat the weed. Then they fertilize it with their own weed dookie. Yeah, that's right. Weed duke. Weed duke fertilizes and, the weed. And you could do a laser light show for the pigs, for the animals. I mean, it's what a weed pig. Thing. It's a circle of wind. Pink Floyd, pigs on the wing. It's all, it's, it all kind of, it's ipso factoing. It's cohesive. It's circle of life, 360 degrees. It's a circle of winds. I'm seeing that. Like if your uncle had this thing, it would be packed with fucking shankins. It'd be like a 12 of them in there. Just shankins. It'd be shankins and like Florida ceiling. Is that is that a is that a nice bottle of wine? No, that's fucking that's Svetska that he made. Svetska Vasa. Yep. But yeah, my uh, my my eventual one day dream auxiliary kitchen will have a dry <laughs> aging meat fridge. Then again, you could just make a little cubby hole, line it with fucking like Himalayan salt, and then close it up, have a little humidifier in there. You're fine. If you be a goddamn That's basic it. bitch. That's an easy way to do it. Same thing. What you do is you put your meat in there, your cigars. Like you got to age everything and you got to like smoke it. You got to like humidify everything the same. Same. Yeah. This is badass. They're not for the faint of heart or faint of wallet either. Like, how about $7,000? How about it, like a, a humidor with meat hanging in it? Eh, I'm not a cigar guy. I get a few at the gas station every couple of years. You know, nothing fancy. You could have like a, a smoked, like a smoky, like a Maduro beef cut. That'd be kind of cool. We'll have to experiment with that. We may have to. This is a guard city, man. 
Tampa Cigar City. This is we, I can make that happen. This is your wheelhouse. And you've got right, a next. couple more things on here left, right? Yeah, next up, I saw something really cool just as we were putting this together. So this is on some weird little site. It's not Etsy. So I was like, all right, Etsy has some cool stuff. I've gotten some cool stuff off of Etsy, like hand handmade stuff. But this is a personalized Alpine Skiing Knowledge Life Lessons Tumblr. And hmm. on it, it's pretty cool because they have like – they have like – diagrams of like skis and some information on on that they have alpine skiing from 1936 and like the instruction on how to ski a hill through like the gates so it's pretty cool stuff a little bit nostalgic but a little bit knowledgeable and uh it just looks pretty cool i mean i gotta say um that would nostalgic. be a nice little... i like that knowledge and nostalgic together nostalgic, nostalgic. That's right. But uh, these are kind of the gifts that like you can't get them everywhere. They're you know, think about it for a lot of people, especially ski people, usually people that have been skiing, traveled around, like they've had access to a lot of stuff. They appreciate a little bit more curated, unique things. So finer things saying. in life. Finer things, you know. So this Indeed. looks pretty cool. That is pretty cool. I like that. And then we have one other thing that I thought was pretty helpful. And, you know, when you go traveling, especially, or, you know, if it's so easy to just take your boots, chuck them in your car or chuck them in your boot bag and forget about them. Traveling, you know, you're in a hotel, you just kind of chuck your boots off to the side. One thing that has been a huge game changer for my, as I think, I feel like for, for my ski game is having a boot dryer. Yeah. And this one is one from Odor Stop. It's a boot and shoe dryer and deodorizer with heat nice. and a high output fan. Because, you know, we've all had those mornings where, again, younger, we were dumber. We just threw our skis in the car on a cold night and you get into these cold, wet boots. You can barely get in them. You're like, why would I have done this? And then you go yeah. to like a fancy hotel. You go to like, what's the place at Snowbird? They have like the, the boot dryers there. Or when we were in Ishkill, we had that amazing room that had the heated uh, floor and the lockers. Ski room, the man. Ski room. Love you that get place. that and you're like, oh, so I can actually get up the next morning and have boots that are warm and comfortable and dry to put on. Like, what a big you're difference that makes. Dry? Really? Yeah. Yeah. This one, I don't think this one is mobile i think this is one that's you just kind of set up and, and have it on the floor of your chateau or house or condo whatever you have but i have a pair and i believe they're from serious or serious however you want to pronounce it the the snow what are they called the, something rats heat rats maybe and then there's little things you just chuck them in your your boot or plug them into the wall super nice i mean you know you, you put them in overnight wake up the next morning they're just ready to go nice and dry and they're yeah. not, you know, it's it's cool the way they're shaped because they have a little fan in them usually. And the fan kind of like pulls the moisture and the odor and the, you know, everything out. And, you know, kind of the way it points, it'll just kind of pull up boot and do its magic so that the next morning you're ready to go. Uh, yeah, you kind of want to have a fan because that will dry out everything pretty well. And then if it does have a heater, that's even better. But you don't want it too hot because you don't want to fuck up your boots. No. And also, having this is great in the uh, you know end of the season. Make sure your stuff is dry because a lot of times the rot in your, your uh, liner happens from moisture. So if you get these, you keep them in, you put them in your boot every time you use them you get a lot more longevity out of your boot liners too, which is, you know, if you spend good money, you get like some, a really high end boot or you go to Surefoot like us fancy folks did, you know, you want to make sure that you can keep these, these boots and these liners working and being at the top of their game as long as possible. Yeah. And off season, if you do any hunting or you do a lot of work like off season and you wear boots and shit like that, great to have. Um, Hockey, you know, that's that's another thing that little guy here plays hockey. 
doesn't dry out his boots properly. We got a hanging rack. At least he hangs them. But uh, should have a, like, you know, should have a dryer. You know, just a fan at least. You know, so it's good to have options for for other stuff that you do. Um, the other thing you do is is pop out the boot liners so you could dry the boot out, and then put the boot dryer in the liner just itself. So. Yeah, you know, but def of definitely get one of these boot dryers. That makes a huge difference and it'd be a great gift for the skier or snowboarder you know and love. Yep. Right. Awesome. Uh, and last but not least, why not get a highfalutin ski bum Yeti Rambler, a shirt, a hat, some swag represents the fact that you like skiing, that you like the crude comments that we have, the fun shit we bring to the table, the opera ski, the people that we know, the places that we've gone, like, of course, saying, you know, wearing the the silent, non-crazy, like, verbiage on it, just the nice logo, why wouldn't you want to represent that? You know, and just, you're, rep you're representing small business, which has, have all taken such a beating this year. Yeah. We'd love if you shopped at our shop. And I will tell you, this Yeti Tumblr, there's only one left. I great. use this thing every single day. I absolutely yep. love it. It works great for keeping things hot, coffees, teas, Jaeger tea, it's whatever. Yeti. Yeti's like the, the, the gold the standard, standard, if you will, in thermoses exactly. these days. And I will, with the whole you know COVID and limited apres ski, I'm not saying you should do this. We're not recommending this. But... You could use this in the morning for your coffee when you go to the slopes. And All then day. on the way home, perhaps maybe give a little little rinsey poo and then put a beer in here for your drive home. That's right. I'm it just, all works. I'm not saying I've done it multiple times. You have taken I'm not that saying thing you on a should boat, do it. On a boat in the summer and everything stays fucking cold in there forever. It's great. It's it's a wonderful piece of merch i gotta tell you i use it every single day i love it yep so those are some ideas for the skiers and snowboarders you love if you have any other ideas suggestions recommendations we'd love to hear it hit us up ski bum podcast at gmail.com boom i think we just do the second one because it's getting so freaking late and i'm ready to fall asleep yeah it's fine my, my tincture is kicking in all right, yeah. and now it is time to go under the ropes. We have one awesome story here. Awesome. Get super, super creepy. Super creepy. Get paid to have your face painted onto a creepy, super realistic mask. God, that's fucking creepy. 2021 is the, or what is it, 2020? I was already going into the future. That's where my brain's at right now. I'm already, already thinking ahead. You're not living in the past. You think you're living in the future, which is I'm good. In the future, baby. 2020 has really been the year of the mask. You know, we never would have thought. We just look at Asians wearing their masks and laugh at them. And now we're the ones all wearing masks because we have to prevent this your bro fuck. from getting this stupid disease from your dumb brother-in-law to be. This company in Japan, they've taken this to the next level. They watched the movie Face Off maybe a few too many times. Face times. Off. Times 2020 is the only time this is possible. So this Japanese company, Kamenya Omoto, are setting up a specialty mask store and is paying Tokyo residents three, you know, the equivalent of $380 to have their faces copied onto realistic 3D printed masks. Then the company will sell the 3D printed mask version of your face for $750. Damn. So the best part of that is if you, if you get somebody that is like, you know, well-known or something like that, you can walk into like a casino and they won't know you're counting cards. <laughs> or they'll treat um, you like a VIP. You can go find the best looking woman in the town find out what her husband looks like, get his face printed, go home. Boom. That's like the movie face off. And you are hooking up. And you're like, you know, After how is she done, you're, you're taking the face off and be like, ha ha. <laughs> you've been, you've been punked. 
Konnichiwa. <laughs> Konnichiwa, bitch. <laughs> She's like, no, I got punked. You got, you got little penis. <laughs> so this is so freaking goddamn creepy. They said you can already pre-order the realistic mask of the store owner's face for about seven hundred and fifty bucks, but the company says it will start launching more face options soon. We will this is buy a fucked up business model. We want to buy your face. Yeah, and it says, of course, it could be a problematic if a stranger wears your face to commit a crime. In 2019, the BBC reported oh. a person who wore a realistic mask impersonating a French minister to steal millions of dollars. Fuck yeah. That's recent, the first thing I use it for. A recent study had even proved that people have a hard time telling the difference between a real person and someone wearing a realistic face mask. Nice. We better jump on this soon so that we can like get like like big money stuff first. <laughs> I can't believe I'm I mean I can, but I can't believe people will volunteer to get their stupid faces printed for 380 bucks and then someone else is gonna go. I mean, think about it. You're gonna do a bank heist, you're gonna go rape somebody, you're obviously gonna go and buy this mask of someone else's face, right? But it's like fucking it's like social media getting a bunch of likes. Like, oh yeah, they like my face so much that like I'm responsible, I'm up for like two thousand charges of rape and five counts of, of murder. Like yeah, I'm, I'm well known. That's why everybody wants my face. Like, it's, I don't know. This seems like the worst idea ever. Editing. Or you could go full Guy Fox, where everyone's wearing the mask and no one knows who anybody is. Like, that's maybe this that's is a goddamn black mirror in real life. This, I, I can't believe this company's actually doing this. This is madness. All right. They're going to put this face on one of those crazy. Uh, Boston Dynamics dogs that's going to come rip your, your face off. It's going to be like you're going to see this dude coming at you. I can see in the future those like robot dogs just having some sort of like mirror face so that when you look at them, all you see is yourself in this robot. Like when Luke Skywalker has the trippy vision where he like killed Darth Vader and he opens the mask and it's his face in Darth Vader. Like that's Damn, what they're going to do. They're going to have robot dogs with mirrors so we see ourselves in the dog that we enable this technology that's going to kill us. Dude, on a psychological level, there's a lot of fucking analysis that needs to go on with your brain right now. That's not that's a whole fucked up area right there. Dude, if I, they tried to 3D print my brain right now, that 3D printer would blow up. I'm telling you. There's just neurons. The, the neurons that are firing right now, they're vaporizing COVID. They're just, they're metabolizing THC. Allegedly they got this six tuple dry hop, triple India pale ale going on. I mean, there's just, I feel like lawnmower man right now. Like I was like this, this dullard. And then just, I just it gave it a little beef <laughs> liver injection. And now it's just all over the place. It's like Kanye West. Like I, one second. I just said a prayer. Genius. I'm a genius. <laughs> genius. Well, th you just mentioned 3D printing. So now you don't have to buy this shit. You just 3D print somebody's face and be like, boom, face off, face on, face off. Like, do you remember, remember like the 80s like thing? With the, with the, right? Oh, with the Jake, people. Jake and Haka, the man of yeah, a thousand with faces. The faceless people that are like, way to chucking faces on. What about, like, remember like back in the day, like the 80s? The big thing was to like photocopy your butt at like the company Christmas party. That's what it. if you like 3D printed your butt on one of these things? Just put it on your face. Part. Think about like, man, I printed my DNA at the company party. What about that? <laughs> it's fucked up. And anyone, making, DNA anyone making photocopies for the next two weeks got a little bit of me. <laughs> That's right. That ain't white out, my friend. <laughs> Don't lick it and scratch it, because it's not, not going to be tasty. 3D <laughs> printing your butt wearing it on your face. Uh, you know there had to be some accidents when that was going on. I wonder if anyone's ever been thrown out of a restaurant, store, shopping center for having like really something gross on their mask. Again, the old goatsy photo from back in the day, one of the original photo bombs that people would, would send to each other, where it was a, we believe, allegedly gay gentleman who is like, got his like fingers in his 
butt cavity, like holding it open. And it looks like you can fit like a medicine ball in there. Like it's damn. What so kind of you, porn are you watching? It's not porn. This is like one of the original photo bombs people would just send you. It's oh, like, oh, man. check this out. Hey, look, it's uh Christina Applegate's like naked butt. And you're like, whoa. And it's like just a dude holding his friggin. Ah, uh, nice. <laughs> holding the uh mm-hmm. the back entrance of the barn open. But imagine it's like a, you had that the original two girls, one cup. Oh, this is before it's even before that. I know. It's a photo <laughs> version of the two girls, one cup. Super old school. But yeah, like that. <laughs> Two girls, one cup. I remember speaking of Atlantic City. <laughs> speaking of Atlantic City, I was in Atlantic City at the Apple Store, and it was when Two Girls, One Cup had like just come out, and I just went to all the computers and just typed, <laughs> typed it in and like left it on the browser open. It's boom. Kids are like staring, like, "Mommy, what's that?" I want some ice cream too, mommy. <laughs> Oh, well, the, oh. well, the Virginia City Buffet is just right across the boardwalk, Timmy. Right. You can get that there, Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> That's horrible. Terrible. See, if, but if you didn't laugh, who's they don't know. even know who's there. Who's going to know? Oh. If you didn't laugh at something in the last five minutes, I just I feel bad for you. But there was yeah. just comedy gold right there. COVID's killed your sense of humor. Oh my God! It really has your taste buds real. and your sense of humor. That's that's a real one. That's suffering your said, sense of humor. China virus destroyed your mm. sense of smell. Big, big China, big China virus big from China. China. <laughs> the big China. I wonder if he calls. I wonder if he refers to China as the big China. <laughs> That'd be hilarious. <laughs> I had a call with the prime minister of the big China. The big guy. I mean the big guy. No, the big guy. Big China. We're working big out Jai. with the. Uh, Working out the, <laughs> the, the um, uh, what do we call it? The trade deal with the China. With the China. This is called. This is called China, China. It's what would they do? They're like, no, we don't like what you're calling us. I mean, well, it's like okay, it's sort of, like there's so many countries. Like Germany is like Alemania. You know, there's all these different terms. Yeah. It's actually what in Germany is Deutschland. In Spanish, it's Alemania. In the U.S., yep. Germany, like, like really, like we're just gonna take what you name your country and be like, yeah, you know what? We don't really want to call you that. We're gonna call you this instead. Well, now in American, we call it China. Doesn't Greece have like a really cool name? But we're like, hey, Greece, bunch of greasy people over there. We're calling it Greece. <laughs> I don't even know how the words came out, right? Just so we do. Yeah, we just like, yeah, we're gonna call you this. So how about that? That's what did Ellis invented- Island, apparently. Like Ellis yeah. Island used to be, you know, people would come over. They had these really cool names, and yeah, like I remember hearing a story about some guy had this, some, you know, whatever Russian Jew had some some like long, complicated last name. They're like, yeah, I wouldn't call you Eat Man. I'm like, Damn. what? Like that? That's your your Eat Man now. That's your last name. All right. Like, thank so a lot of people, you know, like so it was all got- assholes with no sense of humor were working at Ellis Island, like fucking with people's names. Pretty much. Think of that. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm too ignorant and stupid to actually call you by your real name, so I'm just gonna make some shit up. That's what we're gonna call you. Yeah. You're now That's known cool. as Tony Tuba. How about that? Tony Tuba. Your last name is Tuba. <laughs> A lot of people's last names were changed because of that. Yes. Like and sometimes the spelling and sometimes completely changed. Godfather, place. remember? Yeah. Andolini was his last name. That's where it's from. Corley was it Corleone they were from? And the last name was Andolini. I think that was it. And they called him Corleone because yeah. they were from Corleone. Cor- yeah. Yeah. Crazy how things work. So if you want to be young Robert De Niro from Godfather 2, you can have yourself 3D printed as that, I'm sure, from this creepy ass place. And then you could buy that mask for 750 bucks. But I want to almost say almost say the new Ellis Island is the new social media. You're not known as Brian. You're known as BJ581. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. What's your handle? You need to choose your name, your identity. Yeah, 69, right? <laughs> so <laughs> our buddy, uh, what's his face? Let's not say their name. Won't say his name. Uh, 
he smoked crack by accident. You know that guy. So he goes out, starts looking for a job. We call him Cracksident. Cracksident. So he starts looking for a job, and he realizes his handle on on inst. Uh, what was it? His handle on Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever his email he was using was like Microsoft sucks whatever number, <laughs> and he's like. So he's sending out these resumes and he's like, what the fuck? You know, these people looking at my resume weird. Like he went to interviews and they're looking weird. And, and then he realized like, oh, fuck. They're probably looking at my, my thing. He's like, what does it say? He's like, he never really checked. And it's like, how many people went with like, you know, Big Cock 99 is my. Dude, is that my... was like, like the original like AOL, like Yahoo oh, yeah. days. And it's, <laughs> well, and it's at AOL.com. Like yeah. you fucking. Really, you still have AOL and you're in programming? Like it's like really? big pimp sixty nine at AOL.com. Exactly. And people are like, yes, I want a job to be your compliance officer, your HR manager. <laughs> like, really, dude? Like with that <laughs> Well, that was the big thing. Like the I remember going to like a resume writing course and like after college and like they're like, make sure your email address is not something <laughs> something stupid. Stupid, yeah. Nose picker, chunky Trans ass, Transformer like lover. Yeah. 007. Yeah. Mr. Huggies. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Don't do anything creepy like that. Yeah, but that but was yeah. one of those things. People didn't think about it and, you know, just made your stupid email address back in, like, the late 90s. And then you're like, but mm. it was funny and cool. And now, actually, that's what you're known as. Hey, Mr. Huggies, what's up? Yeah, because you just, when you go on your social media, you just kind of use that same handle because it's, it be, yeah. You became that. It's like you were this thing before. You were a person with a first name, a last name. Perhaps you were baptized and you had a Christian name. And then you became this handle, this alternate version of you. Ipso facto, the, no, the new Ellis Island. The new Ellis Island. We've oh. created... It's sort of like Ellis Island. Actually, it's like Etsy Island because you're building Etsy. something. You're creating something. Etsy Island. We did ourselves. We did ourselves. We built ourselves. We formed. It's like art imitates life. Life imitates art. Yep. And Yin then the yang. people supporting that art change it on you, and they tell you what they want. It's fucked up. I won't even get to it. We're, We're not even going about. there, man. We're keeping it real. We're keeping it in the safe space right now. Keeping it real. Well, I guess that wraps up the old podcast for the week. Thank you so much for listening. We do appreciate it. Check us out. Keep on podcast.com. We have a shop. Ski Bum Podcast, Ski Bum Podcast dot com slash shop. There's just so many words and syllables and S's going on in there. If you nice. want to support us, donate to our cause. We appreciate that. Links on the website. Subscribe to our newsletter. We haven't put one out le lately. We need to get one out there. It's very important. Yeah, about that. That's that's on my mind. Go to the site. Sign up there. Socials: Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Untapped at Ski Bum Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. We really do appreciate it. And we'll talk to you guys next week. Stay high, stay fluting. See ya.